you send me emails like that idiot sent you're going to get a reaction i know perhaps some of you didn't perhaps like to see or hear what i said but trust me i'm not bothered don't have a go at me and don't have a go at my wife and don't have a go at our beautiful dog Very good, very good. Mrs. Bonner, where are we? Uh, we're on the back of Chow Bella. What are we doing? Um, oh. We sat having a coffee and doing the vlog, doing the podcast. No, we're doing the Q&A. That's what we called Q &A. it now. Yes, for those that are new around here, I'm not being cool putting sunglasses on because I'm not cool at all. Um, it's just that the sun's actually out. It's mid-September. And yes, we do a monthly, we're a little bit out of sync with this, sorry guys, but we do a monthly Q and A, where you very kindly send in the questions, and Mrs. B does not like to know what they are, um, and we read them out. We don't do religion and we don't do politics, and sometimes I have to edit, let's just say, some of the um, the language. Um, but let me just uh, get the questions up, and all I'm doing, folks, is just literally reading direct from the iPad or the the emails that come in. Um, I cut and copy paste whatever onto the iPad, so. Actually, before we start, for those that have been around for a while and watched our last q and I've had a lot of emails congratulating me on my approach and stance for the comment I made about uh, an individual um, and my personal circumstances regarding work, etc, etc. Thank you. Um, I don't, I'm speaking for myself here, I know Mrs B's got her own mind and she's certainly got her own views on things, so this is just from me. I don't wake up to upset anyone i don't wake up to um offend anyone um but if you send me emails like that idiot sent you're going to get a reaction i know perhaps some of you didn't perhaps like to see or hear what i said but trust me i'm not bothered don't have a go at me and don't have a go at my wife and don't have a go at our beautiful dog those areas are absolute no go so don't have a pop at me because i'll show you my teeth back sorry to be so long-winded and the final one that I'm going to mention, other than my retirement plans, which I no longer talk about, I'm, we've, de we've decided to no longer talk about lodges because um, some of the emails that are starting to come in, um, again, I don't wake up to insult anyone that is living or about to go and buy a lodge. It's your life. I don't really care what you do and where you live. Go do and live the best life you can. Um, I just read the questions out as they come in, um, but clearly it's um, got under some folks' skin. Um, I haven't got the time or inclination, again, don't take the wrong way to, to read uh, some of those comments. I'm just not interested. Not. <laughs> so, yeah, we're not going to um, discuss lodges anymore because, as I say, it's clearly uh, splitting uh, opinion. So we have had a couple of lovely emails this month, which I'm not going to put in. I have responded to those emails privately, so I hope you understand in terms of um, why, because as I say, I'm just, we do this for a little bit of fun, don't we? Mm. And we just don't want it to get all edgy and arsy if that's the right <laughs> word so <laughs> politics religion maybe, and lodges and maybe, my retirement don't maybe, ask maybe we could call it edgy and arsy rather than q and a <laughs> yeah, edgy and arsy monthly what do you think? yeah anyway let's move on so i hope that's cleared that up uh happy to carry on mrs b yes that basically leaves one question this month <laughs> <laughs> right here we go so um as i say i'm just going to read them straight out um with a little bit of editing um on occasion uh, Paula Gibbons from Saltash in Cornwall. We went to Saltash. Oh, we did, yeah. Very we drove nice. down to have a little look around. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Paula's put, love the channel, and I would love to know what you both mean when you say the big black folder that come with the boat. Um, sorry for being really nosy. Take care. Keep up the great shall work. I, shall I go and just go yeah, out go and grab it? It's in the bottom drawer. Yeah. That's a really good shout, Mrs. B. So, in essence, um, Paula, when we bought um, Chow Bella, and the obviously it was pre-owned so we didn't buy it from you and the first owners obviously um, bought it and, and kind of had it built there we are. Um, and we basically were left thank you mr b we were left with this lovely black presentation folder um with a fair amount of documentation um and this is basically uh, from aqualine marine um and it's the owner's manual uh, and this is where I refer to a lot of the things I refer to in terms of um, what we know about the boat. It's got the sales invoices in there, so we know how much, um, obviously, the previous 
um, owners spent and it's also got let me show you a rather lovely um, there's probably about 20 or 30 photos here of when the boat was actually built from the actual base plate being put down to all the internals everything there's a good photo look can you see that so that's what I mean thank you for that Mr B yeah I'll put it back in a minute that is what we mean when we say Paula the big black folder and as I say no one was more surprised than me and Mrs B when we were having a little as you do a nosy at that when we moved on to Chow Bella and we found out how much the boat cost so that's why we know those things because it's all in that big black folder we felt very posh didn't we <laughs> we did we didn't get anything with the first boat we just got an invoice chucked out <laughs> so Paula you're not being nosy as I say we'll uh, we'll answer what we can answer but that's the big black folder oh did oh, you used to do the red book it used to be this is your life that was the red book that was Eamon Eamon, oh, Eamon Andrews. Andrews. Eamon Andrews. For those of you who are further afield, Google, This Is Your Life. It was a sweet Great time, programme. Yeah. yeah. So, Paula, thank you. Uh, Rupert Reynolds. What a great name. Yeah. Rupert Reynolds. You need to go and be filmed, don't you? Yeah. And Rupert Reynolds is from the Flyde Coast. I think that's what Blackpool there, isn't it? They're them St. Anne's. I should know that, but I don't. Blackpool. Anyway, Rupert's put, um, absolutely love watching you two. And I'd like to ask, how long do you stay in that lovely back deck? And is it heated in any way? Apologies if I've asked before, if it's been asked before. Just really curious to know if your back deck's heated. Oh, sorry, I've clicked. Sorry, I've clicked on something here and now I'm looking at some work stuff. <laughs> Let me just go back to Robert, uh, Rupert's question. Just curious to know if it's heated and also if the boat um, is cold in the winter. Do you have a fire? and any other ways of heating it. Again, all the, um, all my very best, and apologies if this has been asked before. Keep up the great work and take care, you two. Oh, thanks, Rupert. So, uh, you may have seen Mrs. B pointed to something. Oh, you can actually see that on shot. That is the Dyson Hot and Cold. It's the big one. We bought that last year. It Again, because someone asked recently, they're 700 pound. Um, I don't think that's particularly cheap, but I do think it's a brilliant heater. Mm. I personally don't think it's a very good fan. Um, but it's a fantastic heater and we've had that on actually the last couple of days haven't yeah, we? Yeah, in it, um, yeah. And you could genuinely Rupert I believe sit on this back deck all winter yeah. with that fan on. No grey area there that's how good that fan is. We've all got also got the smaller one of those in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. uh, again sometimes in the winter Mrs B will put it on for five or ten minutes in the morning. Yeah or, or just before we go to bed. Yeah and in terms of um, so the back deck isn't heated as such in terms no. of integral heating it's that freestand uh, standalone sorry uh, Dyson we've got a more so squirrel um, multi-fuel stove which is amazing oh it's fabulous that kept the boat for the last winter so six months we didn't use the central heat and we've got a central heating system called a Webasto um, we've got quite a large Webasto in terms of its burn capability it's a I think it's a nine kilowatt um, the Rabasto's fine, um, so we've got two towel rails in the bathroom and a radiator in the bedroom and they're called thin rads um, in terms of, so we haven't got physical radiators in the main cabin as such Rupert um, and we ran the Rabasto or the central heating twice last year just so I could do a couple of cycles to mm. make sure it was still working. Yeah. But our main source of heat is our um, more so squirrel I stove. love, I love actually doing that uh, when Mr B's at work and me and Kenneth come back from a from a walk and I'm stoking the fire up, it's lovely, I love it. Yeah, and as I say, um, maybe go back a couple of um, Q and A's and I know we've done a couple of actual vlogs way back in the day um, in terms of more so squirrel versus diesel. Because again, Robert, honestly, don't go down that road because that's no. another debate, no. you know, in terms of, you know, who thinks, you know, what's best, blah, blah, blah. We just happen to personally like the more so squirrel. Absolutely, absolutely. And do you know when we came, when we first bought Chow Bella, when we, when we first walked on, we both went, ah, oh, brilliant, it's got a more so squirrel stove. Because um, it looks just like a more so squirrel stove. And it turned out to be a diesel one disguised as a morsel squirrel so we well, just had it changed yeah, didn't we yeah that's that's a good point it, it the stove we've never had changed it's, it was just the innards as such the yeah. inside workings of it mrs b's right so the owners of chow bella the so the, the people who bought it big black folder they had the morsel squirrel put in but they had the insides taken out and converted to diesel we tried to run the diesel for the first winter and again we had 
I, I personally think they're useless. Um, and then we had it converted and then we ran it last winter. And as I say, there were days where we were literally <gasps> sitting, sweating. <laughs> Yeah. It really does heat the boat superbly well. We had everything open, we didn't did. we? Yeah. It just got a bit too yeah. hot, and that was in midwinter. Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. Rupert, thank you. Thanks, Rupert. Thank you. And apologies if I've got your area of the UK wrong, but I'm sure that's up around the coast area of Blackpool. Um, Paul Jenkins from Surrey. I'm going to put, I'm gonna have to put my glasses on, folks. Oh, this right. is a sign oh, of This me. might be your first on, on YouTube, me. Yeah. Mr. It looks B, like, I've got reading glasses. It looks like an old Harry there Potter. Moving on, um, Paul has put bloody great response to that idiot who was having a go at you last month, Darren. I've, I've said my piece Don't on there. Don't encourage him, Paula. He doesn't need Paul. any him. Paul, sorry. <laughs> um, I also need. have worked my butt off to climb the corporate ladder and it does annoy me that certain folk think it's okay to have a go at others who put in all the effort and manage all that pressure and stress of it all. Ran over. That fella who made that comment was an absolute idiot and you dealt with it superbly well as always. Darren Evans for Prime Minister. <gasps> oh no, no. Can you imagine me as PM. No, no, nobody want that. Right. Anyway, thank you, Paul. As I say, I, I've, I've said what I've said about that idiot last month. So, Paul, what my question is in all of this is in bold, Paul, so I don't know if you're having a rant at us. Have you bet? Oh, I've done it again. I press, I'm looking, I've just clicked something. I'm looking at me uh, quarter four budget there. You don't want to see that. Um, have you both all in bold have you both put the idea of spain or france on the back burner for good question reason i ask is i recently went to see a property lawyer and it's not as difficult as folk make out you you pair would just need to demonstrate that you can support yourself over there the rest is in lowercase <laughs> just thought i'd ask you just thought i'd ask as like you darren i am not ready to retire yet but no someday i will and there is no way i could cope with living on a boat we are on a wide beam at the moment on Tatton Hall, lovely marina, but I would rather keep working than just sit and get piles on the back deck. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, what's the point of retiring and doing absolutely nothing all day <laughs> and all year? If folk can't afford to retire, then surely it's best to keep working and at least be able to afford to do stuff. Blimey, that's me blacklisted from the marina then and this channel for that rant. No, Paul, look, you're entitled to your opinion. Um, you know my opinion, I say, I'm not going to talk about retirement, but you know my opinion on it. Mrs. B has a, uh, is retired. You have a lovely life. Beautiful yeah. life. Uh, so everyone's Old different. Life. Yeah, everyone, aren't they? You know, so in terms of have we put it on the back burner, uh, or is it a no? We, nothing is a no at the moment for us, is it? Because we just don't know. Say, so it's quite a few years down the road. Um, you know, last a couple of months ago we were toying around with changing the boat next year and um, we've possibly put that to one side or mm. you know, so we're, we're just exploring we're just trying to future proof some stuff at the moment and, and as I say in the next few years yeah the discussions will probably move a lot closer to whatever it may be um, I'm quite fortunate in that my last role I managed to get some advice from um, an international lawyer and um, we're absolutely fine in terms of, and you made a good point, you're absolutely right, that's the main criteria, particularly with Spain and France, being able to demonstrate through your pension or your investments that you can support yourself uh, to a certain and a minimum amount of money. Um, I'm not flexing or waving willies, but we are well and truly above that threshold in terms of how certain things, pension-wise and etc., are tracking at the moment. So it's not that, it's just, we don't know, do we? We don't know, and I still thank the Lord yes. still got my mom and my dad and um, and it's great that I get to, to go and see them every Thursday and it yeah. takes me about an hour and 20 minutes to get there Absolutely. and I spend the whole day with them and they, they, they're both waiting to have particular operations yeah. at the moment and it's just nice to be able to be just yeah. an hour and, and 20 minutes away. There's no way, I know folk do it again, I don't want to barrage of emails or comments, there are folk that live a long way from their parents and loved ones we're just not going to do that no um you know now we all know that day comes god forbid that's a long long time away but at the moment that's how we yeah live and our life and that's one of the reasons sorry that's one of the reasons we chose mercy we had a 50 mile limit yeah radius sorry from mrs b's parents and family and friends and that's why we live here um you know because it's important and you couldn't, and I'm not knocking folk that do, but we wouldn't want to go to France or Spain in a few years. And as I say, touch wood, 
you know, mum-in-law, father-in-law are still going to be around. They're very active folk, you know, and I don't want to go and see my wife or even me go visit them once, twice a year. That's not no, right. No, no, So, So, so it's, it's great. And I've got a sister and a brother that live near my mum and dad. I, I don't like them too. <laughs> <laughs> he loves them. I love them. So we, we you know, she, they, they've both got three children, not just two children. So we all, we're all um, looking out for each other. So that's, yeah. that's why it's good that to be... Absolutely. So... Bottom line, Paul, nothing's being put out to one side. Um, we're still very much exploring them. For example, the other day we were walking, getting soaking wet in the rain, and I'll be honest, I'm sitting there thinking, yeah, Spain be lovely, but who knows? It's a long way off, but, but well, thank you. My, my, my sister and brother-in-law at the moment are, are doing a tour through Italy and, and all that sort of stuff, and they keep sending pictures, don't they, of beautiful blue skies and... Ugh. Yeah. No, no, we hope you're having a lovely time. I'm sure they're having a fabulous time. So thank you for your question, Paul. Um, Graham and Pauline Roberts from Hull. Never been to Hull. City of culture. Correct. Mm -hmm. I've never been to Hull. Uh, you two are great. And Darren, what a great way to deal with someone, the idiot from the last Q&A, <laughs> who clearly doesn't know what a day's work is all about. A few, a few more folk like you, please, Mr B. Have you ever considered running for local election as a councillor? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I wouldn't get in, and I haven't got the time or inclination. But, but thank you. It lasts about two minutes, <laughs> and then he'd open his mouth. <laughs> right. We'd love to ask you both how you feel about the increasing mooring fees at the marina. We do know this has been asked before, but we do feel, Mr B, you skirted it. How dare you! I don't <laughs> skirt anything. Um, we have two really close friends, one couple on a wide beam and another on a narrow boat who are having to come off because of the cost. We think that's a shame. Mm, it the is. narrow boat couple may actually be staying, but as I said, the wide beam couple are definitely having to sell and look at different alternatives. Um, there's a, comments on that, please. There's another question. What are the alternatives to a wide beam boat? Question mark. Like you, they aren't keen on a lodge and property prices are just silly. Mm. What an awful predicament to be in. We genuinely feel the marina are outpricing themselves. Comments? Mrs B. Um, yeah, we're losing some. Funnily enough, I've just, I've just wrote a card out now to a, to a lovely friend who's, who's gone uh, a few days ago, a, a new home card. Um, and it is, it's, it's very sad because there's been a lot of lovely people that have left the marina purely because the cost is getting so high. These are people that have been here from you know from its, from its conception um i know things have to do it's a business when all said and done it's a business that has to make money and has to make profits and i and i totally get that but the human side of it it's just really sad that that it gets to a point where it is too much it'll get to a point where it's too much for us as well you know because what we're doing is we're renting the water that we're actually putting our boat in and as that gets higher and higher it's just it's never going to be yours it's never going to be something that you're going to eventually pay for no. you're just renting that little bit of water yeah. that you've got your boat in so we we've said before we've got a limit too so if it gets to that i mean we'll be off as well Not yeah quite sure and i, I it, think but. that that's right um just to I'm not splitting hairs just to clarify you know it's not that we can't afford it and it's probably the same for a lot of other folk here it just comes to a point where you say to yourselves is it worth it and and that for us is maybe a couple of years away if the more and increases track and trend the way they have mm -hmm. since we've been here I would imagine that's going to be two maybe three years away and and Mrs B knows and, and I think we're both definitely as one on that we'll come to a decision of right we're not going to pay that anymore because it's just not worth it yeah we're just pouring money into mm, the into, into this the water canal. <laughs> yeah um, and we get that don't get me wrong you know we 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 get that but as I say there comes a tipping point and I agree it, it's a shame that some folks tipping points really are that finite <clears throat> maybe we're quite fortunate you know one of us is still working it's a lot easier mm. if one is still working if if folk aren't working then it comes down to how good your you know retirement pot how much basically how much money you've got in the bank and some folk are having to leave at the moment because they just you know it's tight and I find that upsetting mm -hmm. I do find that Mrs B again is right it's, it's, it's a commercial world we live in I get that you know this company's got to make the bottom line I get all that of course I do 
but again I just think it's it's upsetting me and, and, and Mrs B because you know we know a lot of these folk um, and yeah to your point you know where mm. do you go you know you know <laughs> you know our views on lodges um, you know so <laughs> you know if you were to sell your boat for you know whatever amount of money you know <sighs> prices house prices on land um, are crazy mm. I wouldn't want to be in that position at the moment so you know do you explore further afield your Spains your Frances you know your Eastern European countries I don't know um, basically because I genuinely don't know what the alternatives are um, or renting or renting again that, again you just you're taking long if I was renting it? which I'd rather stay here yeah to be perfectly yeah. honest with you you know renting would you know and I've got no issue with that you know I work with you know, I'm, I'm 55 years old I work with a lot of folk that are very very early career and I sit there privately and I think oh my god I wouldn't want to be you um, nine out of ten of them are renting and will always be renting because mm -hmm. they can't afford to get on the property ladder and that kills me because again they're putting money in someone else's back pocket and living in a property that is never going to be theirs and I find that and yeah. I know that's probably to maybe some of our further afield folk that would be quite alien because I know culturally in some countries renting is is perceived as as, as the way to do things maybe in the UK it's maybe slightly different it's own your own home it's yeah. all that stuff M mom said to both myself my sister and my brother when we were when we were first heading off and flying the nest don't ever rent it'll never be yours and she blessed them. I mean, right. And in those days, I mean, I, I'm going back a long time. She'd saved a thousand pounds for each of us yeah. to put down as a deposit, yeah. which she could do then. Anybody that's young now will oh, can't believe yeah. that. You she, need 30, 40 yeah, grand now. Yeah, we, we all got 95% mortgages yeah. so and used my mom's thousand pounds as a deposit. And that got us on the property ladder. Yeah. Um, I mean, Same you, for me. How much is it now? Would, would you need about 30, I 40 thousand? I signed, well, t just I signed. Unfortunately, and it keeps me awake sometimes, I sign paperwork at work quite a lot from banks and building societies to confirm that we are employing, you know, XYZ people and they are earning XYZ for mortgage applications. And I look at some of the numbers. I looked at one recently, a 26 year old young man, PhD, has got all that debt to carry, probably for the next 15 to 20 years as well, to pay back in terms of student loan. And I looked at the application from the the lender, um, and it was a 35-year lifetime mortgage, and the minimum payment was £1,900 a month for 35 years. And I could see the deposit contribution um, that the family had clearly kind of put together because I spoke to the guy it was £42,000. That's ridiculous. And when folks say to me it's all relative, it isn't. The other alternative that I do, when I read the question um, from Graham and Pauling, the other alternative here locally is, for example, that couple you know that are on a wide beam, um, have they thought about you know downsizing? It's the same process that you would do on land, um, you know. So sell the wide beam and go and get themselves a really nice narrowboat. Um, and there are some beautiful narrowboats. We started mm. a narrowboat. Mm. Um, so buy a narrowboat and then obviously your mooring fees are please some folk i'm not going to like me saying this but your mooring fees are half price in terms of what you're paying for a wide beam so that might be a consideration um and then go take your narrowboat out and, and have some fun um, and that's the only alternative i can think of to living here mm. in terms of being able to stay here um i other than that go buy a fully kitted out van and go and live in that um, i personally couldn't do that um, I, we watch Van Life channels yeah, in yeah, London, yeah. Um, but I know we couldn't do it. Well, I don't think I, I certainly couldn't. I couldn't. Though. No. Um, so it's a good, you know, what are the alternatives? Don't know. Really don't. That's a really good thought provoking question. Mm. Um, it all comes down to money. Yeah, it all does. Comes, everything. Bottom didn't, line. Didn't your mum, when she was alive, bless her, used to say, why potatoes. can't everybody be paid in potatoes and you want to have all this nonsense yes. and fuss? Mother God bless you, you were dead right. Right, anyway, Graham and Pauline, thank you for that thought-provoking question. Um, and if anyone else got any different suggestions, drop me a note and I'll be um, you know, glad to forward them back on to Graham and Pauline. Okay, Gail and Giles Newcombe from Cornwall. Okay. Um, Gail and Giles have put, Oh my God, we have binge-watched you over the last fortnight. <gasps> we are wow. now new subscribers. Welcome on board. Welcome Excellent. to the Madhouse. Um, we love you both. That's really nice. Thank you. 
um, especially for the straightforward approach uh, you both seem to have um, to life and hell yes Mr B for Prime Minister <laughs> it's gathering momentum this isn't it is it the glasses <laughs> um, okay. our question Mrs B's right at the minute I open my mouth you sat no it'd be awful um, our question is um, oh and by the way quick shout out because um, I know you're watching or you will be um, I have a, a colleague at work that, that looks after me superbly well Julie um, I know you watch this thank you for looking after me because what Mrs B's just said in terms of me opening my mouth uh, that's what you kind of say not quite as succinctly and, and politely as that luckily and, he's got um, two very good women <laughs> that uh, they keep an eye on him <laughs> um, so our question isn't boat related hope that's okay as long as it's not politics religion um, lodges what was the other one GSAs uh, motorbikes <laughs> <laughs> right we have been look oh okay yeah I remember this one we have been looking at Discovery 4s for a while and just want to know if you have the one with the fridge in the centre of the armrest and what realistically do you get in terms of miles per gallon on your car? We absolutely love that. I've been saving like crazy for the last two years to get a nice one. <clears throat> Thank you. And we'd love to both meet you one day. Keep being you. That's a really nice thing to say. Thank you ever so much. If you have ever around here, just, just yeah, say hello. Yeah. yeah. Um, do we have the fridge in the armrest? Yes, we do. Um, the car actually, at time of filming this, it's the, what is it? The 16th, whatever date it is. Um, it's actually going in next Thursday for its service and I've asked the garage to uh, regas um, the actual fridge in the armrest so yes it has got the fridge so I'll be putting a few, I'll put a few cans of lager in there for when we drive it obviously Mr B can't <laughs> Uh, so Can you imagine that sat there <laughs> drinking lager in the car? I'm only laughing because my mum, I think I may have said, my mum had both Discovery 3 and Discovery 4 and both of those had. And they are brilliant. They really, really are. Um, that would be nice when we're going down to Devon. Yeah. When we've got a long trip, we can just yeah. put a few bottles, a few cans Absolutely. in there, can't we? Um, and chocolate in there. <laughs> mm. There you go, you see. Uh, miles per gallon. Um, golly. Um, so around town, I'm going to say this quickly, uh, 20 um, that's on a good day um, if you're doing a longer run on a dual casual or a motorway I'll set the cruise control and we'll probably get you know late 20s maybe 30 which I don't think is bad for a three ton brick it's aerodynamically not ever gonna happen um, and it's a three litre twin turbo diesel um, you know you greeny electric vehicle people just move on from that and deal with it um, but I don't think that's bad consumption it takes about it costs about 120 quid uh, to fill it up um, and I'll probably get about I don't know four 450 miles off that but you know what that's all part of the ownership somebody said to me at work the other day my god your car costs nearly a thousand pound a year to tax yes the one that Mrs B runs around and costs nothing <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I've got a little. It's a little Chrysler, isn't it? Chevrolet Spark. A Chevrolet Spark. <laughs> Chrysler. A Chevrolet Spark. Yeah, she's. And it costs like forty pound to fill her up, and I can have six trips to work. Uh, <laughs> Drive around the world in that. <laughs> yeah. um, whereas you touch the accelerator and the discovery and the fuel just go. But that's all part of it. Um, but anyway, thank you for the question. I hope you get your disco <gasps> soon. Yes, they you are comfy. They, they are, are comfy. I think they're the world's best all-round car. Oh, they're lovely. Um, but thank you. Katie and Michael Plant from Cheshire. Lovely um, Cheshire. So, what the hell? How nosy are we? <laughs> um, where is the lovely Dyson hot and cold fan you usually have on the back deck? Um, we notice it's gone. We feel really bad. We're stalking you online. <laughs> <laughs> How bad does that sound, Darren and Wendy? Um, main reason we ask is are they worth the bloody £700 our faces both nearly fell off the other day when we went and looked because we'd like one also do you have the smaller one as well uh, Michael seems to think you do final question Mrs B where do you get your tops and t-shirts from please you always look so lovely wow there's a lot of questions there where do you get your tops and t-shirts from Mrs B oh all over I sometimes get them from my sister and sometimes from my niece and, and just everywhere Amazon whenever I see one that I like I just get but sometimes I come back on a Thursday uh, and luckily me and my sister and my niece are all about the same size so we all swap things so sometimes I have my niece she's a bit younger so I can be a bit trendy if, I'm, if I've got some of her, her t-shirts yeah. I stuff. always have to have a second look who I'm coming home to, to be <laughs> so, so family 
Amazon, anywhere where I look. And isn't it funny you mentioned about the Dyson? Because we've mentioned that, we just yeah. put it back in here. Yeah. Just two days ago it, it came yeah. back in. last couple of days. And the only reason it's not been on here is because it's been summer. Yeah. Um, and as we said earlier on in the Q&A, it's getting a little bit chilly. So yeah, we've not got rid of it. Um, yes, I'm quite sure your face fell off when you found out the price. Uh, you've asked are they worth it. Um, I th for me, the jewellery's out. I, I I like the cool uh, bit. I think it does blow nice cool air. Mr. B doesn't, but I do. But but as a heater, it is oh, brilliant, tick. absolutely brilliant yeah, yeah, as a yeah, heater. Yeah, tick. Um, and the smaller one, you're right, Michael, we have still got that in the bedroom. Mm. I actually think the smaller one, for whatever reason, is better than the big one. I don't know why, but I just do. Um, so yeah, uh, we've still got them. Are they worth 700 quid? I'm not sure, uh, and the small one I think is amazing. Do you know? Do you know what we did have? Do you know what we did have? It was funny because oh. you know when when you move on to a boat, you have to downsize. You downsize about five times because you never do it fully in the first time. And we stopped for a few weeks at my sister's, and um, we left her quite a few things. We said, oh, "Do you want this? Do you want this? Do you want this?" And we had one of those oh, tower fans. Brilliant! It was about fifty pound or forty pound yeah. from Argos. Cheapest chips. And it was just a tower one that, that oscillated and uh, oh that blew out some really good cold air the didn't best it? cold air fan I've, we've ever had yeah and, and um and then when we left it then darren said oh why did we leave it but obviously you can't say oh it. i would if i ever got back to julie no julie you my can keep it house, honestly i'm having it yeah we're no, no we're not no, we're not, joking. We're not going to be in the incubus <laughs> but then we then we we heard a lot of good reports about the dice and didn't we so we thought oh we'll invest in one of those and and i'm happy with it cold and hot uh but mr b just likes it hot yeah but the tower fans from argus are really they good are. For they cold. Are. Right, um, again, thank you, Katie and Michael, thank you for your question. Um, Molly and Clifford Jones from Conway, which oh, we've been to not that long ago. Lovely Conway. Yeah, I love Conway. Is it Conway where they've got the cast it... and the little house? And the tiny little house. Tiny. I think it's the UK's smallest house. Oh, it's t if yeah, yeah, anybody yeah. Google Conway's little house, it's amazing yeah. how tiny it is. Yeah. Um, right, so Molly and Cliff have put. We have been subscribers from the very beginning and before we get to our question we'd just like to thank you both for being good to your word over the last five years or so you've never changed and never once asked for money nope we won't change and we'll never ask for money we're not that type of channel and for those type of channels that do ask for money not absolutely, a problem. absolutely we just do this for a bit of fun yeah this is our fun thing uh, thank you uh, for that and also for putting ta the time and effort in to entertain us each week um, Mr B, one of the funniest things you've ever said, sorry, you've ever had a rant about is why folk take pics of their food <laughs> and post on social media. I've that it. truly will go down in history in our house. One of the very, very funniest things we've ever heard. And so very true. Just my I, opinion. I've, I've done it. And my sister's been doing it from uh, Italy, hasn't she? Oh, look <laughs> at this pasta that we're eating. Um, oh, no, I, listen, I don't mind that. It's when folks go to the 10th degree and, and, and dress the tape. You know, that stuff I think is brilliant. But when folk take it to the next level, uh, no, absolutely <laughs> no. Stop it. Um, right, Molly and Cliff, but only if you feel comfortable. Um, do you mind telling us what type of safe you have on Chow Bella and if you use it and would recommend getting one? We are in the very final stages of signing off on the design of our new narrowboat and our builder needs to know. We have got space even though it's a narrowboat. We intend to be constant cruisers for the first few years and then on a marina. So who knows, we may end up on Mercia. Oh. Thank you and continue with this great content. Molly Thank and you. Cliff. Thank you. Molly and Cliff, I, I, I say I have responded to you on email and I've, I've sent some images. Um, now, please, please, if, if you don't mind me um, stressing again, if you've read the email, you will have read that little note at the bottom, which was basically, we would really prefer if you didn't share obviously uh, with your friends and, and the wider world you know where the safe is and what it's all about for obvious reasons for security um, so hopefully the response on the email um, has kind of helped in terms of the safe do we use it what do we put in there etc etc et and again in that big black folder was the information um, that I screenshotted and sent to you so I hope that's helped I've read this out primarily because 
personally I believe whether it's a, a wide beam or a narrow bow you know a, a safe's a good thing to have mm. basically you know if you've got valuables they don't have to be things like watches or rings and jewelry you know they could be important documents mm. you know keepsakes etc etc they're really important um, and also just as I put on my email it does actually lower your um, insurance quite a lot and it lowers your insurance quite a lot if you've got individual items so on our insurance policy for this boat we've got a number of items i've got a couple of as you know you know rel expensive watches um we've got some it gear we've got some um cameras mrs b's uh, engagement ring and a few other bits and pieces that we insure separately as, as as high risk and high value items when you share with your insurance company you've got a safe and you can prove it with the model number and da 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 your insurance comes down quite a lot so there's also that bonus mm. as well so hopefully that's answered your question cool uh claire and peter thomas from warrington in cheshire uh, you two are great love the banter and mr b you really did put that twat in his place last <gasps> month she can't say that i can actually because i've checked youtube guidelines it actually means a pregnant salmon um, well done you not enough straight talk in the world anymore guess what Mr B for politics <laughs> this is gathering momentum no don't I might do me campaign next month no no definitely <laughs> not no we, we know you pair wouldn't consider this in brackets we think but don't you wonder why folk who are perhaps struggling with more fees were not considering downsizing to a narrowboat I've already discussed um, it's no different on land. Folk are downsizing to manage the co this current cost of living crisis. Plus, without wanting to offend anyone, most of the wide beams never move. You're absolutely right. Um, comments, please, you lovely pair. And Mr. B, don't hold back on us if you think it's a crap idea. As an aside, um, sorry, as an aside, we also love how you described your friends. I think the name were Anne and Terry. Um, how you both feel they are enjoying and living their wonderful life of retirement. Mm. Keep the videos coming. Peace and love. Um, I, we've just discussed it. Um, you know, I, well, I don't think that's a crap idea. Um, Claire and Peter, there's downsizing some, is a good idea. And there's some amazing yeah. narrowboats, aren't there? Oh my God! Yeah. I, I, you know, gun to head, could we do it? No. Um, and that's not because we don't like narrowboats, um, but I do think, well, I don't think we would, would we? Uh, no, we've got used to all this space yeah. now, haven't we? That's you get thing. used to what, but then without wanting to sound a hypocrite or, or you know, I do think it's a good idea. If, if we you, had to, if we had to do it, if it came to a point that we had to do that, then we'd have to do it, wouldn't we? Yeah, absolutely. You know, you have to, at the end of the day... Um, Live to your means. Yeah, you have to cut your cloth accordingly. Yeah. Um, you know, I got dragged up, you know, through the schooling system in terms of, you know, if you earn a pound, spend 99, 99 pence of it, you know, not earn a pound, spend one pound ten. So, yeah, Mrs. B's right. You know, you cut your cloth accordingly. Um, so, no, I don't think that's a bad idea. I really don't. Mm. Um, and thank you for the shout out. You're absolutely right, Anne and Terry. Um, they're a lovely, lovely um, They've just couple. come back onto the marina for winter, haven't they? Yeah, and I do agree. I personally we think they live the, oh, they the time live a fabulous best life. way possible yeah yes yeah. yeah, so absolutely um so thank you claire and, and a great couple too yeah they're great lovely fun. yeah lovely um wayne peters from port talbot uh, i'm one of <laughs> can't wait to read this oh, i can't God. wait to read that oh, i'm one of those friends that pam and pete rogers mentioned in your last q a uh, who they know um who would buy that beautiful boat of yours One hundred sixty thousand pound cash this is a serious offer. We'd love to buy it. Come on, you can't blame a couple for trying. Um, you have my mobile number and email. It's a serious <laughs> offer. P.S. What the hell is going on with the Collingwood prices? There is a brand new 70-foot Collingwood on you and use for £150,000. Um, if you want a Collingwood then... Oh, God, I've done it again. Keep Sorry, I keep clicking things. I, I do apologise. Where have we gone here? Uh, Hundred and sixty thousand. <laughs> we're not selling her. We yeah. decided we're not selling uh, her. Yes, what the hell is going on with Collingwood prices? There's a brand new did it, £150,000. Um PS, love the channel and please sell me a boat. This is a genuine offer. I want to go and use it to live on the Thames. Uh, and you have the perfect spec. <laughs> Wayne, no, it's not for sale. Do you know what? 
Seriously, we're flattered. Yeah, um, yeah, thank you. That's and, you a know, lovely offer, yeah. I've also emailed Pam and Pete Rogers. Pam and Pete Rogers asked a question. It was actually two Q&As ago, um, and they did actually say they know half a dozen folk. I've actually emailed Pam and Pete to politely suggest that we've never said our boat's for sale. No, no. Um, and it isn't for sale. Um, and that's a very flattering offer. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah. It really, really is. But honestly, um, Wayne, it is not for sale. No, we're gonna we're gonna stay with her, aren't we? Yeah, absolutely. We, do love her. we love this yeah, boat. We do. There's no reason for us to sell it. We did go through a stage thinking, shall we? we up, shall we get a new one next yeah. year? Shall we? And yeah. then, we, uh, we, and I can understand maybe that where that has generated this yeah, interest yeah. from, um, yeah. and that may have been our, you know, us saying because you're right, we did toy around with it. But it's not for sale. No. It, it's, so thank you, Wayne. Yeah. Um, thank you very much. In terms of what's going on with, I haven't got a clue. We, we've mentioned it before, haven't we? Yeah. Um, yeah. Because Mr. B, when he comes home, uh, is uh, he always goes on to newer usual. Always, always have, have a, a little look. Always yeah. has a look. What's going? What's not going? What yeah. prices are and that sort of stuff. And it's a number of times he said, "Oh, I can't believe this. Yeah. This boat has been reduced again. It's been on here for so long." And I think we are going through it. It's a bit like a roller coaster. It's like with houses, isn't it? You have a peak with houses where you can sell anything, and they're all selling, and then it suddenly drops. I think we're in a bit of a, I think we are, a valley yeah. at the moment, aren't I, we? I absolutely. You know, and, and the one thing I will say, Wayne, I, you know, time of filming this, you know, there are some amazing deals to be had. On, on wide, particularly wide beams. There's one on here. We looked at it. Um, you know, it's a beautiful boat on here. Um, that's you know currently around about one hundred thirty thousand pound. Um, it's only a couple of three years old. Beautiful. And then there's another. You're right, Collingwood. That's a seventy foot, seventy foot. Um, that's a hundred. You're right, one hundred and fifty two thousand pound or one hundred and fifty four thousand mm. pound uh, for a brand new. Um, so yeah, there's there's definitely deals to be had. I just feel, uh, as I've put my response back to Pam and Pete, because Pam and Pete did mention, you know, you know, me being Mr. Commercial, I think that's what you said, and I take, took that as a compliment. <coughs> we must have, you know, we must be sitting there thinking we've made money. Yeah, we've made money on our boat. Um, there's no doubt about that. Um, if we did take that offer, which we're not, because it's not for sale, no. we'd have made a tidy little number. But I do feel sorry for those that are trying to sell anything at the moment, house or boat, that aren't going to make a profit. That, for me, I couldn't sit with that. It swings and roundabouts, doesn't it? it? Because, because at the moment it's a buyer's market yeah. to buy a boat. Now it's a buyer's market. Oh, yeah. But if you're selling a boat to buy a boat, then you're still in that predicament that your boat's not going to make enough to buy another one. Where know? this is going to come and bite people, I I'm going to be honest, and this is going to upset some folk, and it's not meant to, it's not meant to, but where it's going to bite people is those fools who a couple of years ago oh cost of steel if your boat was in the water when you were buying it and you didn't bid that's all i'm saying but thank you wayne not for sale unless it was 200 <laughs> 210 even then we won't sell it 220 mrs b's in <laughs> <laughs> you get me in, in thrown in with that 225 what you, you would hate that <laughs> you would hate that wouldn't you brian brian and gloria cleaves from lytham st anne's oh you pair are so lovely and little <laughs> kenneth is a wonderful dog oh thank you, you can clearly see how much he loves you too we've had golden retrievers all our life and mr b i think you've mentioned your mum had them they are and we are biased the best dog you can have of course we we're very biased but you're absolutely right this little fella has just added so much as oh, we he's just, just adore love him. him. We just adore love him. him. Can I, can I just say just before you move on? Um, you know, this year we were supposed to be going to to France. We used to be a booked a lovely little cottage in France, and I was getting myself so tight because of the paperwork that we needed for little Kenneth, and and I just couldn't sleep because I had I had nightmares that we would be coming back and I won't have the right paperwork. So I didn't get to go. So he didn't get to go. So we went to lovely Devon instead and had the lovely, which lovely. yeah, which was great. I had the signal box. Um, a, a couple that we know on here some of our friends are taking their dog this year to Spain and I was talking to her and she said oh don't worry this is what we've had to do we're going for three months we've taken our dog so we've discussed it haven't we and we're going to show Kenneth next year Austria you're showing the Alps I've yeah. always said 
Whether you're a so, human being or a dog, you need to see the Alps before you we, we used check to out. go holidaying through the Alps yeah. um, on our motorbike, didn't we, years ago. So so I've, we bit the bullet and, um, and looked at what we do need and we're going to do Austria next year especially for our little furry friend so we can have lots of nice walks so yes brian and glory we agree they are the best just everything he's been the best thing we've ever done as well um and you've also put and i don't want to because again it would cause a little bit to others you know it's so lovely to see that you include kenneth and everything you do we are perplexed why you wouldn't so there's three of us now there's me my wife and kenneth we do everything that's it three that's it all it is everything so thank you for recognizing that if you don't mind us asking a couple of quick, uh, quick questions, um, and we will get to why in a moment, not a problem. How much gas do you get through on the boat? Mm. How often do you have to fill the water tank? We are asking because we are waiting on a new 68 foot aqualine wide beam to oh, be finished. Nice. And we're just trying to work out a few things in terms of budget. Just so you know, we have the same size water tank as you, enormous. <laughs> when we spec the boat with aqualine, and we told them what size water tank and inverter setup they said oh that's a chow bella design <laughs> we're famous at aqualine <laughs> is that right yeah um love the channel and thank you um look we've gone on about the spec everyone knows the spec of this boat is 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 amazing um how much gas do we go through oh golly uh so last year is a rough example we went through two um bottles I think I can't remember whether the 17 or 19 kilograms. I think the 17s went through two of those. So in terms of cost, at current time of filming, that would be probably around about 80 pound. Mm. Um, I feel quite uncomfortable sharing that because there is a genuine cost of living crisis going on. Yeah. Now we, and what we use for gas, um, obviously, what a lot of people bills are made up of our gas central heating now we don't have that as is diesel yeah. as is diesel so and we very rarely have that on because we've got the multi-fuel stove so the gas for for us is the hob and the cooker yeah uh, and the grill yeah so so we we don't need it for a uh, central yeah. heating and i think that's what puts a lot of people's bills up when you start having to put the central yeah. heating on so so as far as we're concerned cooking wise i cook every day I cook every single day um, and yeah. use the oven 95% of the yeah. time, don't you? But it's day. a difficult, that's what we used. Yeah. It's such a difficult, it's not a difficult one to answer, but if you're looking to compare, I wouldn't, to be yeah. honest with you, Brian and Glory, because, you know, your uses and consumption is going to be different. Yeah. But we went through two gas bottles in 2022. Yeah. 2023, we've gone through one. Um, so we'll probably, again, go through two. Um, or I'll probably have to replace this Yeah, because it was round about this yeah, sort yeah. of time, yeah. wasn't it, just before yeah. before Christmas? Um, how often do you fill the water tank? Again, we have the same size tank as obviously you've spec'd. How long's a piece of string? How often, how many showers you take? How often you're on the taps to clean your teeth, have a wash? Again, so on average here, um, I don't like the tank getting below a third full. Um, obviously, you've probably got the same gauge as us to kind of measure the... Uh, the, the, the tank in terms of you know where the levels are um, so I would say on this boat every two weeks I, I fill the tank up from mm. about a third um, to right up to kind of brimming so but again don't please don't compare um, it's how often as I say it's how often you take showers and etc and, etc and, et et and, and again because we have such lovely facilities here our facility block for, for us is just here it's literally a, a two minute walk away isn't yeah. it so I like to have showers in there and I can have 30 35 40 minutes in the shower <laughs> yeah so it, it you know that, that's just a rough idea um in, in terms of the gas and, and the water but please please I know you've not said it but don't use it as a comparable particularly if you're going to go out you know and use your boat mm. I say ours is permanently just sat here plugged into the main so but anyway good luck when you get it I'd love to see some photos yes definitely Lisa Wheeler from so we've got one two we've got three to go lisa wheeler from south london mrs b please tell me two things Ooh. all in bold oh how do you put up now <laughs> <laughs> what is your routine with your beautiful hair are those curls natural question mark you oh. have amazing hair and it always looks so healthy my hubby says it's because you're always outside this is what makes you look like a babe oh by the way he's fancied you for ages and i always <laughs> tease him you bloody tell him, Lisa, from me. No, uh, that's the first question. And second question, 
I think you've been asked this before, Mrs. B. This, uh, but sorry, I think you've been asked this one before, Mrs. B. But the bling on the wrist that you wear, that you have, is always so cool. Can we please have a close up? And where do you get it from? The, bl the bling on the wrist. Well, I don't understand. Oh, the jewellery. Well, I haven't got my watch on. I've usually got a watch, or oh. I've got my Pandora bracelet. Well, I'll let you answer the hair and the jewellery. Well, what I do is because you can see now at the moment my hair is straight, and I do like to straighten it as well. But there's a picture here. <laughs> this was last week. <laughs> this was last week. Look, I don't know whether. There we go with my curly hair. So I always say to Dan because he likes me with curly hair. Oh yeah. And uh, I, it's naturally really curly. It just I just leave it. I just put a bit of scrunching stuff in it and then just leave it. Um, so I've said to Darren that that my summer hair is my curly hair because then I just leave it because I can't put the air dryer on it because it's too hot. And then my winter hair is my straight hair. Um, so that's it really, I don't use many products or things like that, just something to scrunch it. And my bracelets, if you're talking about these and not my Pandora bracelet and stuff, because I've got a silver one, these are, uh, they're actually Pandora, um, uh, what would you call them, charms. Um, and it's just a leather strap thing, so that's it. Mm -hmm. just, and they are, they are little charms that you've bought me in the yeah. past, aren't they? Lisa, thanks for asking yeah, about my you. regime. <laughs> <laughs> no, I look. No. Thank you, thank you for. And, and you know, again, that just I think really does confirm we'll answer any question except politics, religion, yeah, and, and being logism. outside a lot. We yeah. do spend a lot of time outside, don't we? So that leads Kenneth. into the next question. Oh, so, right. Sam and Bruce Stevens from Loch Lomond. Can I just say, Loch Lomond is definitely, definitely in my top ten of the most awe-inspiring places to visit in the entire world what a beautiful beautiful place that is in scotland wonderful i am genuinely envious of anyone who lives anywhere near loch lomond moving on mm. uh cameron house that was it years and years ago i don't know if it's still around i went when my mum was around god bless her i went and visited uh, and met my mum at cameron house and she through work had got a lodge um, like a log, genuine log cabin. Oh, on the shores of Loch Lomond. Wow. Wonderful Sam and Bruce. Um, we have watched, anyway, they've put, we have watched all of your videos, all of them, exclamation mark. I'm quite sure it's quite a threatening <laughs> comment there. And we love them all. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. B, it's Sam here. I'd like to know, well, this is the Mrs. B hour? Uh, Mrs. B, I'd like to know how you're managing to stay uh, looking so healthy and vibrant. Oh. You always look so well, and I think we are of a similar age. Bruce, my husband, is the same. He looks, he always, always looks so healthy. And he says, now that I'm back, brackets, been working down in London for the last 25 years, now that I'm back up in the great outdoors, my outlook and complexion will eventually change. That I agree with. But if you're using anything else other than the great outdoors, then please do share. <laughs> Thanks for asking about my regime and how healthy I look. It's, pro it's probably, it's, well, thank you, thank you very much. And I'm 58, I was 58 last, hold on, what day to be on now? I was 58 on the 4th of September, wasn't I? So, so, so 58. But I do think a lot of it is because we are outdoors a lot. Um, and what, what was that song all about? I always use sunscreen. I always slap on some moisturiser before I go out, and it could be any moisturiser. Mr B treats me every now and again. I love the number seven She's retina. every now and again. Retina things and all every that sort of stuff. Every now and again. She's hanging on her feet. But, uh, but yeah, I just put moisturiser on. Always put moisturiser on before you go out. That's always there. And, and an old... Um, teacher of mine an economics teacher she used to teach us how to cook and stuff she used to say to me now remember girls whatever you put on your face you put on your your chest so whatever i do to my face i do to my chest as well so there you go and so i always before i go out always take me wallet <laughs> mr b has his wallet which is great that makes my complexion very nice as well but yeah it's, i think it's just been in the outdoors and me and kenneth when especially when mr b's uh, working we have a three-hour regime miss me and kenneth so uh we go out starting at seven o'clock in the morning and come back about half past eight quarter to nine and then after that it's every three hours we go out and have a walk so we're off the boat more than we're on the boat aren't we my regime is 7 a.m at my desk leave 5 p.m come home eat sleep that's it I repeat that's why i'm just looking so healthy <laughs> I look like a conference pair <laughs> I don't care right so Sam and Bruce thank you thank you that's very kind of you final thank question you. Clive and Rosemary from Windermere in the Lake District again like Loch Lomond what a wonderful part of the world you live in yeah. thank you in advance for reading this out if you get to 
you're in. Uh, do you mind me asking, brackets, apologies, it's been asked before, we really are new viewers, not a problem. If the fire you have keeps the boat warm, oh. uh, and is that the only way of heating the boat? Um, I really am relatively new to boats, and last winter went down to stay with my son on his wide beam in London. His central heating wasn't working, um, it's since been repaired, and all he had at the time was one of those living flame gas fires, uh, electric fires, which look really nice. We've got friends who've got them, they're beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Um, living flame fires, which look really nice, but was useless unless you were sat right in front of it. Um, he's thinking about getting a Morse squirrel fitted. Any advice would be really useful. Um, as we know, these things aren't cheap. We've been quoted a couple of thousand pounds, mm. that's about right. Mm -hmm. um, and the work involved in taking the fire out, blah, blah, blah. Um, I agree with the fire. I think our friend Neil and Paul have said that. You've got to kind of sit yeah. in front of them. They're really, theirs is lovely. Yeah, and it looks um, great. Oh, it looks, when it's and you on. you can change colours. You can yeah, change yeah. colours on it, yeah. It's got a remote control panel on it, yeah, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's lovely. Mm. I, I really like the look of them. I really do. Um, but yeah, I think Neil or Paul have, have actually said um, you've got to kind of sit kind of yeah. in the direction it's chucking that. So I, I think I know what you mean there. Um, You've probably heard several times now on this Q and A our views of the fire. Um, you know that's about right in terms of the cost to to get one. And the reason I know that is whilst we had this converted back, when we were on our um, narrow boat, we bought that boat new and it came with a diesel stove. Go and watch the the vlog, mm -hmm. uh, and we had to go and get a Morso squirrel. And yes, that's about right in terms of cost. Um, it's a big amount of money, but. Oh God, you won't regret so it. So worth it. You won't so regret worth it. it. Oh, we love you know, it. If you've been down there, and unfortunately, by this, sound, you said his central heating wasn't working. It's since been mm. repaired. Honest to God, you won't run your central heating with a more so squirrel on. Uh, if you are, there's seriously something wrong then you with you. Really, 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 really <laughs> do have a problem. Yeah. Um, <laughs> trust me, you know we. I did. I did it. And Mrs. B did it. Occasionally, we overloaded the morso oh, squirrel oh last year. It's like sitting <laughs> on the centre of Mars. You came. You came home from work, and it, it's just coming down. It's like, why have you got? You got all the. I've got all the flaps. And everything. January, everything was open. And I went. I think I've overdone it with the fire. <laughs> like furnace. Um, so yeah, you won't. Honest to God, it don't matter what I say, this is a 70 foot wide beam. Um, I don't think you can get a longer wide beam unless you go to a Dutch barge. So trust us, ours is in the middle of the boat and it warms the mm, boat. You won't, lovely. honestly, you won't go wrong. Yeah. Um, so don't don't worry about that. But yeah, it's a lot, a lot of money to fork out, um, but honestly, fabulous. That is it. Um, thank you for sticking with us if you've stuck with us this long. Um, keep the questions coming, we've got um, enough. I try to do 12 each month. We've got enough for another two Q and A's. I think we've got 27 questions. So wow. please bear with us. Um, you know, if you think, oh, you've not read anything out. I try to get a selection and, and a smattering of different kind of subjects. So please bear with us. We, I don't, um, I don't think I have um, ever admit a question unless as I say it's politics or religion. Um, so thank you. We will see you next week for a, a vlog if a we've got some vlog. content. Um, we've made that decision recently, by the way. If we've not got content, we're not going to put something out for the sake of it. No. We don't We don't want to bore you. Um, we're a small channel anyway, so... Right, goodbye. We'll see you next week. You will. Hopefully, we've got content. Bye. Goodbye.